So for the second topic, I kind of want to talk about uh, some of the negative experiences that some people are having, or, or maybe even we have had. Um, I, I did actually finally today have my first negative thing happen with the system. Um, but I, there's also one other thing that's a little annoying. Um, so maybe I, I guess I'll go first since I'm bringing this topic to the forefront. And two things I've had happen with the system that really kind of annoy me. Uh, the first is that the game does record your activity, right? It records how long you play. Well, as of today, we now have it confirmed. It takes 10 days before, if you go to your profile, you could see how many hours you spent playing the game. Um, I don't know why they put this arbitrary 10-day thing on it. Um, mm. Not that, like, it's such a minor thing, because who really cares how long you've been playing outside of bragging rights? Or yeah. you're just curious, like, man, I feel like I played a ton of Breath of the Wild. How much have I played? Oh, man, I played 200-plus hours? Well, geez. Um... But it's still one of those things that it, it feels like there's no reason to make us wait 10 days. Right. Except just Nintendo wants us to wait 10 days. Yeah. Like, there's, there's no logic behind, oh, yeah, you should uh, you should wait 10 days. Um, it's just really weird. And then, uh, now that, again, that's a really minor thing. Uh, the, the major thing I had happen is today I finally had maybe my first hiccup with the system where the system itself locked up coming out of sleep mode. Um, and I had to hard reset it, which was a pain in the butt, because I held on the power button for like 15 seconds, and it still wasn't doing it, and then it brought up a different menu that gave you power options, and then it locked up again there, um, and then finally, after I held it down for like 30 seconds, it finally hard shut down, um, and I haven't had any issues since turning it back on, but, um, it is one thing that I, I worry about. I did submit a ticket to Nintendo just to let them know what happened. I don't know how frequent this is, but Nintendo's not going to fix it if they don't know about it. Um, because I, I think it was an OS thing or something coming out of sleep mode that made it lock up. I'm not sure. Uh, so that is one issue I've had, and that sucks because I think that's one of the worst issues you could ever possibly have. You turn your system on and it's locked and doesn't work like that. That's not good. Right. Um, so that really made me scared because this is a new system and I'm already having that kind of issue. Uh, but again, it was an isolated thing, and of course the classic, have you tried turning it on and off again? Fixed low. Um, yes, I'm trying to turn it off, it's yeah, not turning off. Yeah, it's just not letting me. And I'm just like, great, I might have to unscrew the back and take the battery out? This is going to suck. Um, but no, I was able to turn it off, so thankfully uh, it took a little longer than what Nintendo's support site says it should take, but it did turn, It did hard turn off, which is good. Um, I was really afraid I was going to break the physical button, I was, hold, I was pressing it so hard, I'm like, just turn it off! <laughs> yeah, um... So Eric probably hasn't played it long enough to quite see any issues yet. No, no. You just been having a old grand old time with Breath of the Wild that I have. Uh, Mason, have you uh, noticed any hiccups on your end? Uh, actually, there was one instance where I was at my dad's and I was well. Like every time I get something new, like I just I get excited. I have to show people. So I took one two switch over to my dad's. And I'm like, whoa, you know, guess what? This thing doesn't even have to have a charger or like a TV. And he's like one of those not techy people. He's like, okay. I'm like, cool, okay, whatever. So we started playing 1-2-Switch, and he's trying to look at the, the screen and stuff. I'm like, don't even look at that. You don't have to look at, you know. We were playing the uh, Samurai Sword game, I think, where you have to go like this, like with your arms, and then, or you have to like swing yeah, with your arms and block it. it. Yeah, and whoever's catching the sword has to like hit their hands up against the Joy-Con, right? And so they had a test for that before the game starts, like always. And he went, and I went to clamp the sword with my hands to catch it. And my Joy-Con, it was like... It, it didn't connect after that. Like, it didn't register that I kept hitting it. Like, the first time well, I got... Was this the left or right joy card? This was the right. Yeah. And um, I was hitting it because it's blue. That's how I know. Um, I hit... I, like, smacked my hands together like you're supposed to. And because it doesn't detect it otherwise, you know. But then it was, like, every game we played after that, every now and then it just wouldn't work. Like, it wouldn't, like, detect my Joy-Con being on. And it was, like, trying to detect, like, player two, how, like, the sides of it, once you... Have it like as a controller itself on the sides where the SL and SR buttons are. Uh, it, the lights kept flickering, like it didn't know which player it was, and it was very strange. Um, after I turned it off and back on, it seemed to be okay though, and I haven't had any problems since with it. That's always the solution to all technology, isn't yeah, it? Exactly. Turn it on and off again. Um, so there's been obviously other issues. I briefly mentioned one that I haven't had because I purposely avoided it. Uh, the fact that the screen scratches in the dock. Um, we now know because of testing by people that the screen itself is plastic. The, 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 
Because, like, how this technology works is there's an LCD, and then they have a screen that goes over the front of that LCD. So the LCD itself might be glass or whatever, but the screen that we actually physically touch is plastic. Um, and because of that, it scratches at a hardness of 2, which is not much. You can, you can scratch it with your fingernail. You scratch it with, you know, the plastic rails that are on, on the actual dock. Um, and I don't think there's so much an issue that it's plastic. Cause, um, I mean, yeah, that's going to make it more susceptible to scratches. Uh, but the fact that the the thing you're supposed to be taking it in and out of can cause the scratches when all nintendo would have to do is just actually put some like felt or or just something soft yeah. at, along those rails as you slide it in a very very cheap like one penny per unit fix um and nintendo didn't do that and according to reggie fils he said you know with that scratching issue he asked all of his staff members hey have you experienced it in all these events and all this stuff like no we haven't i, I, I don't know how they can't experience that yeah um Unless, for some reason, all the units at all those places were using glass screens and the retail unit uses plastic. Um, I don't know. Now, I mean, before we even knew this issue, we had screen protectors. Yeah, that's, I was um, going to say, the only other thing I could think of was maybe all these units had screen protectors that maybe did, that I did, just didn't <laughs> yeah. realize. I, it, it's hard. Uh, so, like, that is, like, a legit issue that I'm never going to see because I, have, I, have, I actually have tempered glass on mine. You're, Eric's going to be getting tempered glass on his. Right now, he's using... One of the Hori screen protectors, which I don't know if it's showing up on camera, but there's bubbles all over the place. It's a piece of yeah. junk. Um, I was using it before. I didn't have quite as many bubbles, but I still had some some bubbles that, even when I got rid of all of them, as soon as I dock it, they would come right back, and there'd be like 20 of them every time I undocked it. Um, piece of junks. The, they're plastic film protectors, which usually aren't that great anyways, but you know I, i've never had an issue with bubbles on anything else i've used it on mm -hmm. and for some reason these particular protectors just suck yeah so tempered glass is the way to go there's nothing officially supporting go on amazon get, you know get your tempered glass but bare minimum at least the plastic film stuff prevent them i think from getting scratched in the dock um so like I, I it's one of those issues that I, I feel weird that nintendo didn't address it with the dock and maybe they will with future docks that they make um but i don't know like, to me, this is a tablet. Shouldn't you have a screen protector anyways? Yeah, right. I mean, I don't know. I, have, I My phone always has screen protectors on it. Like, you should just... It's just a smart thing to do as consumers. Um, you've seen enough cracked phones out there, I'm sure, to realize you need to oh, put yeah. a screen protector on there. Um, they're worried about how it feels, you know, using it. They're not worried about how strong it necessarily is when you crack it on something. And even then, the whole point of, like, this glass screen protector, if I drop my Switch and it cracks, the actual screen didn't crack my protector did and i could just peel that off and put a new one on um Hopefully. <laughs> well that's the idea you can still no i, I have one of them crack once on a phone before it comes off yeah because no, no, like no, there's no, a no. film yeah no i meant hopefully it didn't drop just at the right angle oh. where it cracks the actual screen yeah. especially since protector. like you know it could hit the corners yeah here, that's what i'm saying or, but whatever if, if i'm hitting corner I, if i'm dropping it in that i have other issues um so uh i'm trying to think what well, have any of us um Experience issues with the left Joy-Con. I haven't. Not that now, I you probably recall. haven't detached. No. Eric hasn't probably detached his because he's been playing mostly portable. Uh, Mason, have you had an issue? Not that I can recall. I mean, it's just been that Outside one. Outside of the, the one game I went to Switch. Yeah, just with that. Yeah. Um, so I have two sets of Joy-Cons. Now, I haven't done enough extensive testing because I'm, I'm going to fully admit right now, every time I've used my Joy-Cons, I've been pretty close to the console now. I did take the console to my other job and did like won't you switch and just dance with these kids at my other job and we got pretty far away from the console but it seemed to be registering just fine. Um, not really the definitive test because one test I want to do is I want to take the Joy-Cons that came with my system and my new set of Joy-Cons and, and kind of do a distance test and do all those behind the back tests that people did. I haven't done that yet so I don't know if there's two different designs of Joy-Cons going on over there because we know someone obviously took a part of Joy-Con. And one of the issues with the left Joy-Con that he found was that the antenna was built into the board and by a piece of metal, and that's affecting the signal. Um, and he fixed it by putting a wire in and just running the the antenna down to the bottom of the Joy-Con where his hands don't touch, and then all of a sudden he had even more range than the right Joy-Con. Um, so, again, this isn't an issue any of us have experienced. It does exist. It's happened frequently enough. Nintendo knows about it. Um, but again, I, I almost feel fortunate because... To me, that's not even the worst of the issues out there. Um, watch this video, and it's by this YouTuber named Crowbat, who's famous for doing these kind of launch videos for pretty much all tech out there. 
um, about people showing off all the issues people have had at launch, like basically failure to launch. Because tech, th there's always def defects out there, right? Yeah. Right. Uh, um, so like there was that one with like the, where he turned down the switch and the thing would literally start like whistling at him. It was really, really loud. And then like the screen would start like crackling and then people would like lose some of the color on the screen. Uh, and then there was that weird excuse where the guy had a dead pixel in, in Nintendo UK and he contacted Nintendo support who directed him to a page on Nintendo support site that says... Um, it is normal for LCDs to occasionally have dead pixels. It's not dead pixels. It's not considered a defect, so you couldn't get it. So you couldn't get it fixed. Yeah, dead pixels. Oh. Now this was just that's Nintendo UK. Yes. It does not say this in in the United States. So like, I have a feeling if we had dead pixels on our screen, Nintendo like Nintendo of America would probably re replace the screen for us. Um, and fun fact about Nintendo of America support: everyone I know that has used it so far with the Switch who had issues, Nintendo. Uh, got the system and sent it back to people within the same business week. So if you sent it to oh. them on Monday, you'd have it back by Friday. Wow, that's, uh, that's quick. Impressive. So like Nintendo America has just been way on top of like, dude, we're not screwing this up. We're fixing your problem, getting it back to you. Um, Props to Nintendo for that. Yeah, one. like like it's good on them because you know you know you're shipping it to them. That probably took at least two to three days. They probably didn't get it till Wednesday. That means they fixed it either Wednesday or Thursday and did overnight shipping. So like that's good. Props to Nintendo. That cost them. Cost a pretty bit of change there, but they they don't want people having a bad experience with Switch. Um, so yeah, it, it's kind of it sounds like all of us have not really had issues. Um, that, that that's well, that's good, right? Yeah. Uh, that that's our systems are working as intended. Mm -hmm. um, I feel sorry for those that aren't, but I, I guess if any of you guys have had any problems, let us know, so we can well do more research. Like yeah. I told people. Uh, you one of the live streams or whatever that, like, if you're having issues with your Joy-Cons and you want me to do more extensive Joy-Cons, like, testing with my Joy-Cons, maybe you want me to take apart uh, my blue left Joy-Con and my gray left Joy-Con just to see if there's a design difference. Like, if does one have the antenna in the board and does one not? And is that why maybe you get different distances with it? Um, you know, so is it worth getting a second set of Joy-Cons now or should you wait until they redesign it a bit? Um, it's a video I'm, I'm considering making anyways, but obviously if I get demand for it, that's going to make it, like, push on my priority list.